Welcome. Today I'll show you how I made these bracket feet as my contribution to the Make It Forward project. Join me. Hi, I'm Sean. Welcome to Spongenworks. What I have here is the current state of the Make It Forward project, a collaborative project that myself and five other craftsmen have been working on over the past several months. Each of us adds our own work to the project, and when it's complete, it'll be sold, and the proceeds will go to benefit a charitable cause. This year, we're supporting Pause to Care, Inc. Pause to Care, Incorporated is a 501c3 certified nonprofit pet therapy organization dedicated to bringing comfort, care, and hope to kids battling cancer, kids living with special needs, and wounded warriors and their children. You can learn more about the work Pause to Care does and watch interviews and news specials by going to their website, pausetocare.org. That's P-A-W-S, the numeral two, C-A-R-E dot O-R-G. My contribution to this project was to make these bracket feet. So before we begin, let's look at a prototype. This prototype features a unique profile as well as a design and a relief carving. Let me show you how I did this. To make these feet, the material needs to be milled and resawn at the bandsaw. Be sure to use a push stick to keep your fingers away from the blade as the material passes through. Now the piece is book matched to make two pairs of feet. Then the stock is ripped to width at the table saw. Using an MDF template, I draw the first profile at one end of the walnut stock and cut the waste away at the bandsaw. Relief cuts may be required if the bandsaw blade is too wide to cut tight curves. Once the profile is cut out at the bandsaw, we're going to take the piece over to the router table and clean up the cut. With the template firmly attached with double stick tape, the profiles are trimmed flush with the template at the router table. Be sure to use a guide pin to pivot off when starting the cut and be aware of the end grain orientation when flush trimming. With the profile cut on all eight pieces, it's time to join each pair to make one foot. Again, I use double stick tape to fasten the workpiece to the miter fence and a stop lock for proper registration. With all eight pieces cut, it's time to strengthen that miter joint with a spline. To do that, we're going to need a jig. This jig holds the work at a 45 degree angle and without tilting the table saw blade out of 90, I can make a cut to accept the spline. Be sure to hold the jig firmly against the miter gauge and keep your fingers clear of the blade. Always be aware of the blade height and where it will exit the work. The diameter of the router bit smooths out the detail of the template, so to refine the shape of the profile, I use a chisel to define the points where the two curves meet. Use a slicing motion when paring against the grain. A sharp chisel helps. Now the feet are ready to be glued. I add a bit of glue to the spline curves and the joint surfaces, and then press the pieces together making sure the ends and edges meet. And sometimes I use a lot of clamps. With the legs ready to be profiled, in order to do this at the bandsaw, we need another jig. This jig is a simple block of four layers of three quarter inch particle board and a toggle clamp to hold the feet firmly in place. The profile is drawn on one face and each foot is firmly set against the clamp block and the clamping force is applied. Check to be sure the work is square to the table and parallel to the blade and begin shaping. I use a pulling motion across the blade from back to front to further refine the curve without cutting too deep. The 
cut the other face, the clamp needs to be repositioned to the other side to hold the work. Notice the profile does not need to be transferred again as the end grain from the first profile is revealed. This is a guide to follow for the second cut. Just darken the line with a pencil and it's rinse and repeat. The end result should look like this. To clean up the bandsaw marks, I clamp the foot in a vise and use a gooseneck scraper to refine the cove profile. The very last detail to mention before we go to final sanding is how to make this relief carving in the foot. First, with the work secure in a vise, I draw the boundary lines for the carving. Then I use a sharp chisel and slowly approach my lines. being sure to sever the end grain as I pair to prevent breaking the detail. Take your time and enjoy the process. After a finish sanding to 220 grit sandpaper, I apply an oil finish. The first oil finish is Danish oil. It goes on real easy and it brings out all the color in the maple and the walnut. Danish oil has become my favorite finish to apply before an oil varnish. It highlights the grain and figure remarkably well. Once the Danish oil has cured, I apply four coats of General Finishes Armor Seal for a nice satin feel. With the finish cured, I now assemble the project. With the board and case upside down on a protected surface, the mounting holes are located and the screws are fastened. To attach the bracket feet, I glued some blocks to the inside corners of each foot and the case, then drilled countersunk holes. I use an awl to mark the screw locations in the blocking, then drive the screws partway through the foot block to position the foot. Tighten the screws just until the screws are snug. Then the whole thing is turned upright and the drawer is slid into place. Now it's time to admire everyone's craftsmanship. The game board top, the half-blind dovetails, the drawer pull, and now the feet. I hope you enjoyed this project and follow the Make It Forward project on Twitter. It's time to send this project to the next craftsman. Thanks for watching. I'm Sean. See you next time on Sponge and Works. To keep up with current projects, follow me on Twitter and Instagram. And for even more news and projects, go to spongeandworks.com. Thanks for watching.